Hello everyone, I am Rajesh Isan Gupta and we are continuing our discussion on the multimedia approaches and that, that had started from 1947 or in the 1940s. So, as we have already discussed Krishan Khanna as, as part of the progressive artist group, the other prolific artist from this group would be uh, M.F. Hussain. And, and of course that I mean M.F. Hussain ha had in, in his, uh, you know, in his long career, we find that he had experimented his, um, uh, you know, his, his expressions uh, in, in various different uh, media. Uh, including painting, including uh, you know making making murals, and then making videos, making movies, and so on. So some of the things we find that how what was um, um, you know some things that 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 we find in Hussein's practice that might also uh, indicate to to something that that we had already sort of um, mentioned earlier about this this approach towards bringing different kind of mediatic expressions together and expanding our practices in different kind of mediatic expressions so M.F. Hussain, we find that he had um, or before before um, establishing himself as a as, as a artist as an artist in in India, we find that he had worked for making uh, posters for movies and and the large scale posters he had painted for movies. So um, so those those ones when we see that so from there we see how he already had this. Uh, this superb control over the brush for making the bold strokes at the same time the kind of lines and and this this dynamic at the same time uh, uh, this this rigorous lines that 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 we find in Hussein's work so all those things perhaps we find that uh, he uh, knew both sides of art making so for example um, uh, the kind of practice that contributes to the popular culture and the kind of practice that goes to the institutional gallery oriented museum oriented practice and that is the reason what we find that mf hussein was almost in this crossroad so he had definitely he was very conscious in terms of building his image but at the same time he was always experimenting with different kinds of expressions so in this image that we find which is called the autobiography pitch why and um, it is undated and it is an oil on canvas. So now in this particular image what we find that there are many different things to uh, sort of unraveled and um, the first thing I would say is that how in the 1948 he uh, went to see this exhibition there where the historical Indian artifacts were present different kinds of artworks and, and artisanal works were present in the exhibition which perhaps gave him an exposure to the richness of Indian art and of course that is something that was that stayed with Hussein for his lifetime. So we find that in this particular image that what he had done he painted uh, or perhaps we can say that I mean he just painted the canvas with a thin layer of this um, this brown color so which is which is usually considered as ground so in the conventional uh, oil on canvas paintings we find that there is this mid tone which is painted uh, uniformly on the canvas and then the dark tones and the light tones are added on the top of the mid tone and that is how all the images are, are um, executed on the canvas surface. So in this case what we see that he definitely did not uh, do that but he carried this convention this part of the convention where this brownish tone is applied uniformly on the canvas surface. So instead of applying it uniformly he, he um, put this, this haphazard brush strokes on the canvas so that the, 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 the residue of the technique that, that retains in the final work. 
now at the same time if we also see that the way he had uh, been closely working with uh, different uh, folk um, um, you know practices so so the practices in the villages and so on so we can also see how the the practice of applying mud on on the walls and which which also leaves this kind of um, the marks of the hand the marks the the gestural marks of hand on the mud wall that is also something that is reflected on his canvas and it is not just one thing that we find from the folk practices that he imbibed but this the color scheme is also something that that uh, he had uh, deliberately uh, learned from various folk practices and as we can see that he had you know uh, chosen the contrasting colors and and he had been uh, uh, throughout his career he had been very brave in terms of um, choosing color scheme. So, for example, if we see this lemon yellow here and then that is then um, uh, complemented by uh, here with this orange with this bright red, but then also with the shades of blue, purple and the forms of course. So, these are some of the ways in which we find that uh, there are narratives, there are context, there are stories. But at the same time, the stories do not really stay as a documentation, but they turn into a story of the painting themselves. So, for example, if we see the architectural um, in structures here, so the kind of colors that is used. So, for example, this this here, if we see this this purplish color that is used for the area which is under shadow. So, and the same color is then used on the body of the elephant. So, it it does not really uh, you know make a logical conclusion about why this color is used in this way, but if we see that as a, as a gesture of uh, how to build up the entire narrative, this visual narrative which would have a logic of its own which would have a logic of the use of color and complementing the colors on the picture plane, then it makes sense. So, in other words, I would say that he was very much interested in textual narratives and as this one is called the autobiography pitch why perhaps here is a representation of himself or someone he identifies with. And then we see that this person is almost at the threshold and this is this boundary between like these two worlds and he is almost he is uh, gesturing towards uh, looking back but he is almost in the movement of going forward so in uh, in this way we find that he is almost in the crossroad of this this two different worlds and uh, so this can be interpreted as the narrative part of the story However, if we see that the way the all the colors are involved here and so that that tells us that I mean this is not just a narrative like a textual narrative or just an illustration of an idea, but then the use of the color the way like I mean that this this complementing colors they sort of um, uh, compel us to consider the life of the painting uh, to be to be not dependent on on just a textual narrative but but also uh, in its forms and in its color in the pictorial arrangement and most importantly in the lines so that is something i'd say that i mean um, hussein had successfully done here to establish that i mean how the visual narrative is there the textual narrative is also there they might they are probably like parallel processes but still like I mean why the visual narrative has an independent life from the textual one. And also we cannot really deny the importance of this background where all those half a set lines are there, they almost tell us about the, they actually uh, is in contrast to the, the solid fields of color like this places. So, it is kind of that I mean the to add dynamism. To, to the entire scene and then the movement of the eye that of the viewers that, that will be there from one part of the image to the other. So, those are the ones which are directed uh, by this by this lines which are spread across the canvas.
So if we see that I mean this kind of practices or this kind of experimentations were happening from 1940s to 1960s, so they also as, as I have mentioned that they were also trying to establish this new uh, niche for the Indian artist, the artist who are uh, you know mostly situated in the urban centers and they are the professional artist for sure. And this artist tried to establish this new space for uh, the next generation of, of the fine art practitioners so that the society can understand their importance. Now, to have this, we also find that there were things those were done, that, for example, to develop certain ideas about the individual artist where uh, the artist is considered as someone who is um, exclusive, who is individual and um, a lot of times that their practices are not you know, quantifiable and not always their practices are rational. Now if we see that I mean that was one of the approaches, one approach that was taken up by this, this contemporary, I mean by this artist, the progressive artist group in, in, in Bombay and similar kind of activities we also find like the progressive artist group in Calcutta and so on. So if they, they are the ones who were more or less uh, involved in uh, charting this path in this way. Then we find there was another group of artists, they came together in 1960s, 1970s in not in a metropolitan city but in Baroda. So we find that there, there are the artists for example Jyoti Bhatt and then uh, J. Swaminathan, Jagadish Swaminathan and then Gulam Mohammad Sheikh. So they, they are the artists and a few other people as well. So uh, they are the artists we find that they try to understand that w what is it to be an artist, what is our responsibility to be an artist and it, it, it cannot just be uh, exploration of form, content and to, to establish the, the uh, importance of visual through their uh, unique expressions, but there are more to that. And through those discussions we find that the, this, this group of artists as for example Swaminathan, Jyoti Bhatt and Gulam Mohammad Sheikh, they have taken up a different path. Even though Gulam Sheikh was also working on, have taken up um, oil on canvas, but we, we find that I mean his approach was very different from if we consider it with, if we compare it with uh, M.F. Hussain or um, you know uh, Ara or Souza or someone else. So what was happening in Gulam Sheikh's canvas? So this is one of the examples that we have on screen and this was made in 1980, 1981 around that time. And this is an image which is called the city for sale and this is an image which was painted after this riot in Baroda in, in Gujarat and uh, we find that there is this almost, uh, the, there are many things which are happening at the same time and it gives us this, this, this large narrative scene. There are many figures, there are architecture, there are vehicles and of course there is this one you know vegetable seller that, that we see prominently in the left corner of this image and her vegetable cart is almost spilling out and everything those were arranged and these are almost like spilled out in this city. So this is there in this image and uh, of course that what Gulam Sheikh had done, he had uh, studied closely the Indian miniature paintings that can be the Mughal miniatures, the Pahari miniature, Rajput miniatures and so on and then also the manuscript paintings. So Gulam Sheikh from very early time we find that he is not uh, just involved in practicing but he was uh, also a teacher who was uh, and, and then he, he is also someone who was a dedicated um, art historian. So he, uh, we find that from the very early times he started talking about the interrelationship between text and images like for example how we understand a textual narration, how we understand the use of text in uh, images for example here we find this particular uh, text which is there in the middle of the screen that, that says Silsila and that is this very well known 1980s movie 
uh, starring Amitabh Bachchan and Rekha. So, this is something we find that how um, all these references are brought in. So, text and visual, he did not really consider them to be separate entities and, and he also mentioned that how in the miniature paintings, in the manuscript paintings, text and vis visuals used to be together, but in the modernist paintings, for example, the ones we find by the progressive artist group and many other um, you know, artists who, who, who were busy establishing themselves as the new uh, face of contemporary art in India, we find that they have made uh, a distance from text in their images. And so, this is something that I mean uh, Ghulam Sheikh had sp uh, spoken about and he had justified that why there, th there needs to be much more inclusive sort of uh, approach towards looking into this problem and how that can also help us to understand the visual culture uh, better. So, what we have here is that he had certainly taken reference from the miniature paintings that uh, this, this multiple uh, perspectival views. So, uh, some of the and, and then also like the scale, the proportion and, and uh, uh, so all, all those different kind of things that some of the important figures, the figures who have prime importance in this image would be in a much bigger scale than the other ones who are um, you know supporting the narrative. So, if that is one thing and also we find how um, the, the this, this meandering paths and, and um, different elements all of them they come together in one picture plane like the miniature paintings. However, we also see that he was definitely not you know having a romantic point of view about the miniature paintings, but he thought that that is a viable way to talk about the contemporary situation in uh, Gujarat and of course that I mean in India because he had uh, spoken about the chaotic situations in the bazaars as well as our life. It is not always well organized, but it is a chaos where different kind of things are happening at the same time. We cannot really just focus on one thing. So, or like I mean if there is an event, it can have different kind of impact on different group of people. So, all those different approaches need to be brought together in one work. So, that is something we find that Ghulam Sheikh was experimenting with and, and of course, this is one of the uh, one, one of his um, you know early experiment and one of the successful experiments to, to have all those ideas together. Also, we find that the way uh, the, the forms are constructed and then the, the color and everything. So, we definitely see the use of this, uh, the complementary colors and uh, use of uh, color to emphasize certain area. So, something that, that we have already seen in the progressive artist groups work and, and the earlier works. But here what we see that all the colors are also, th th they are contextual. So, it is not just uh, for, for um, it, is, it is not just for uh, making a harmony or making a balance on the picture plane, but they also have almost symbolic value towards understanding the visual as well as the textual narrative, you know, that is layered with the, with the visual that we see on the canvas. So, from that approach, we also find that there are other people, for example, K. G. Subramanian and K. G. Subramanian is, he was this artist as well as a teacher and art historian, perhaps uh, to some extent similar to Ghulam Muhammad Sheikh and uh, as Ghulam Sheikh had uh, had his training in Baroda and later on in Europe, then K. G. Subramaniam's training we find that to be in Shantiniketan and then later on of course in Baroda. So, for that reason and then his approach was different in terms of how he looked into various uh, craft practices and, and that made his uh, work uh, 
very different from his contemporaries. So, we see that I mean in 1970s, 1980s during this time he was working as an, as, um, as, as an art practitioner, as an artist, but at the same time he was also regularly writing about what is modernity, what is tradition, what is craft, what is art, all these debates. And then we, we see that I mean his, his um, uh, inclination towards craft, inclination towards understanding some of the practices which are not considered to be as part of the institutional art practices. So, that made an impact on his visuals. So, this is a visual that we find and which is called, uh, which is called Inayat Khan looking at Oxford. And so, um, this was during his first visit to Oxford and uh, he took reference from this, uh, this uh, very well known image of Inayat Khan dying uh, and uh, that, that is a Mughal miniature and where we see this, this frail body of Inayat Khan and, and he, he is uh, almost in his deathbed. So, here what we find that in, in K. G. Subramaniam's rendering of Inayat Khan. So, here we see this particular figure is here, but we and the frail body of Inayat Khan with his skull cap and everything those are evident, but at the same time we do not really see him dying, but we see that I mean he is turning his head towards outside and looking at the landscape. And when asked about this image then K. G. S. had said that how on the morning when he, his first morning in Oxford when he looked uh, outside the window of his room and as we can see that there is this tea and it is piping hot assumably because it also has the, there is a suggestion of the fumes from there. So, if this is something we find in the, in the tea uh, or whatever drink it is that, that also says something about the morning time. So, uh, what we find here is that in a way that he brought some of the uh, fragments of history in his experience. It was him who looked out of the window, but he imagined that what if this, this dying man had the opportunity to look out and then that man encounters this world full of color and this architecture with, with this gabled roof and um, of course, uh, with, with the arched windows and everything. So, th there is a way in which we find there is a uh, deliberate playfulness in terms of uh, how to bring different kinds of uh, uh, narratives together. So, it is, it, it has its root in history, but at the same time that there are personal narratives which are involved and then of course, if we see the kind of color scheme, we find this, this almost the flat like colors and um, then the use of lines which all developed over time more and more we will find in the later times of K. G. Subramaniam's work. So, they, they perhaps also uh, referred back to Kalighat paintings and some of the other forms of um, the folk practices. So, bringing some of the uh, historical narratives part of the folk practices and then his own experience and all of them they remain as fragments, but then he made this uh, brave attempt of bringing them together into a narrative perhaps the narrative is not conclusive, but what does that do to the viewers is to open up new possibilities to think about what is the role of uh, visuals, what is the role of colors and lines in our lives. And so, in this way we find that the, this, this uh, the almost humorous images of KGS that, that showed us a different approach towards painting, different approach towards art making, which was different from perhaps Gulam Sheikh from um, the Bombay progressives. So, these were different ways in which we find that the art making had progressed um, in the um, mostly the, the painting practices they, they have progressed in the uh, post independence India. Now, here is another image by K. G. Subramaniam and as you can see that this is, this is a terracotta uh, a relief and in, the, in this terracotta relief this is a recent work, it was uh, made in 2008 and it is called anatomy lesson. 
However, this, this kind of terracotta reliefs KG has started working with from um, very early uh, times. So what we have here, this is called the anatomy lesson and in this small squarish uh, terracotta plex, we find that he had uh, used uh, clay slabs for making the forms and it is almost like a way or almost like a gesture to say that he is not trained in the traditional uh, um, you know uh, method of making sculptures or making relief, but then he accepts that and then he also sort of uh, stays uh, um, you know truthful to, to his practice which is primarily two dimensional. And that is the reason what we find that this clay slabs which transform into various body parts, faces and hands and everything else. So those things they come to represent his practice or his engagement with this, this particular medium and it is so terracotta does not really remain only um, an expression on clay, but it also remains uh, as, a, as a reminder of his practice which is primarily two dimensional. And we also find that KGS has worked on uh, cutouts and, and collages and for, for books and everything else. So uh, uh, many other things. So that that uh, that way of working with collage or like way of working with a form which will be a cutout and then placing that onto paper is also something we find that to have reflected on this terracotta flex. So, in some way we find that this, this kind of expressions where the artist stays truthful about his own training, his own limitation and then the artist also sort of expands that to different kind of mediatic expression is something that also came up as a, as a new way of approaching and appreciating art practices. So these are these are some of the things we would find that this this uh, back and forth between uh, different mediatic expression is something that uh, became more and more evident in the later part of uh, 20th century by the Indian artist and and this is this is something we will be discussing in the um, you know in the next lectures as well. Thank you.